Raise your hand if you've ever had an out-of-body experience. Anyone? Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Of course I have to put my hand up. (sighs) Out-of-body experiences. Are they real? Are they fake? Did you make it up? Is it all in your head? Well, all of it's true and none of it's true, right? That's the beautiful thing. My out-body experience happened when I was about 20 years old, or 20 years young, or 20 years circled the sun, whatever way you want to look at it. And I was in my room and I was doing a guided meditation I just started to get into meditation a little bit more. Um, I was a bit skeptical, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, and I didn't really know what I wanted to get out of it. But nevertheless, I was doing a guided meditation in my room. It was dark, the lights were out, it was nighttime, curtains closed, wasn't on anything, didn't take anything, completely sober, just in my room, trying to relax, basically. And all of a sudden, my eyes are closed, And then, the only way I can describe it is, I opened a pair of eyes that I didn't even know I had. (laughs) And I'm suddenly in this enchanted forest. Pictures can't do it justice. My words can't do it justice. I, I cannot explain it. And guess what? I don't tell anyone about this. I don't tell anyone about this. Because I just sound like a quack. I, I sound crazy. But guess what? Keeping a beautiful experience to yourself is a crime. Say it again. Keeping a beautiful experience to yourself is a crime. We should share beautiful experiences. They're to be shared. This life is to be shared. So I'm sitting there, suddenly my eyes open, but my physical eyes are still closed. and. I'm sat on the edge of this cliff or hill and there's this large open landscape in front of me and it just goes on for miles and miles and miles. There are trees around me, tall trees, like those big Canadian trees and there's like squirrels running up them. It's like I'm in like a Disney story or something. Beautiful. And it's almost like someone's thrown glitter in the air and it's all sprinkling down. Not a lot of it, but just like these little gold starry things um i also noticed that i don't have a body i don't have thoughts i don't have anything i'm just this ball of energy essentially um and i that's the only thing that kind of not takes me by surprise but i'm like oh okay but i'm totally fine with it and all of a sudden i turn around and there's this man this old man and he's tiny he's about this big and he is um he's a black man and he's got a white beard and white hair and these amazing like diamond blue eyes like the brightest blue eyes i've ever seen i can't remember if he had a stick or not i want to say that he did have a stick but i i don't know i don't want to say anything that might not be true but i feel like he had a stick and he had like these robes on and he there's there's no language you don't talk but he basically said follow me and he must have been talking telepathically or something because i just understood and again that you don't walk in this realm you, you you don't walk you don't talk you don't engage in conversations you, you just are so i started following him but again i'm kind of like floating through this wood and there's like this path and I look up and I remember hearing like the of the trees it's like it's like nature that had never met pollution completely untouched by man completely untouched by this physical world it was a different world it was a world without touch and we're going through these woods through this path and we end up coming to this giant house now this house happens to be a mushroom <laughs> I promise I did not take mushrooms or anything. I was completely sober in my room, but for some reason this house was made out of a mushroom. Now actually, it's interesting because if you look at the genetic makeup of a mushroom, it is 
more closer to human than plant. That's very interesting. So I go into this mushroom house. It's like all carved. And there's like a spiral staircase. And there's nothing really in there other than it's kind of like a table and chairs. But there was dust on it. And I remember there was like, I remember the light coming through. And it, it, it was all like this nice orange glow. And it just it felt lovely in there. But I could tell no one lived there. It, it was there was no food there was no material items there were no real objects as i say just like a table and some chairs there were some other bits and bobs but i can't really remember and then he takes me through to the back garden now the back garden's beautiful it's green and there's lots of flowers and it's very well kept and um it's, there's like a stone wall and a stone uh, bench and this old man takes me over to the stone bench and I don't sit down but I kind of position myself by this stone bench and I remember there's a golden gate on the left hand side and the old man said to me again he didn't say it but he just told me wait here someone's gonna come and, and see you I was like fine and then he disappears and this golden gate opens bear in mind there's no concept of time here time does not exist so I don't know how long this will last. I don't know how long I was waiting in the garden. I don't know how long the walk to the mushroom house was. I don't know how long I was sitting on the edge of the cliff for. But there was no concept of time. Therefore, there is no stress. You're just existing. This golden gate opens and this ball of energy comes through. And sorry, before I say that, so this golden gate behind the golden gate, it's like white, wispy clouds. And I knew that there was a beautiful place behind that golden gate, but I wasn't meant to go there just yet. This golden gate opens, and so many people talk about a golden gate, like, in when they have experiences, it's beautiful. So, the golden gate opens, and this ball of energy comes through, and I knew, from the second I saw the ball of energy, that it was a female energy. I'm a male, female energy. It was like the yin and the yang, connecting. I don't know if it was a past loved one. I don't know if it was a goddess. I don't know if it was mother nature. I don't know if it was God in all of her glory, <laughs> right? But either way, this, this ball of energy comes through and it kind of positions itself opposite me. It doesn't say anything. Like, you know, the old man was like, come this way, stay here. It didn't say anything. We just connected. And I could see um, part of, so I'm like this ball of energy, that this, um, female energy is there and like whew, this kind of uh, it's drawing energy from me and it's passing energy into me at the same time so it's taking a little bit from me I'm taking a little bit from from it or her but it wasn't like a charging thing it was just like a warm hug and I don't know how long this lasted for it seemed like a long time she also gave me a gift which I forgot to mention, I, I should have written this down, but um, she gave me a gift. It was a um, purple uh, crystal with a chain and the chain uh, was like indestructible. Um, you couldn't break the chain. And it's weird because I, I think I put it on, but at the same time I didn't have a physical body, so I, there was nothing to kind of put it on, but I just remember that was her gift. Like she had to bring me a gift and it was a purple crystal with an indestructible chain. Um, and then we started to exchange the energy and it was the love energy. It was like from the heart area, the heart chakra. And we were just doing this and it was amazing. And then whoosh, it kind of stopped and she left back through the golden gate, the gates closed. And then after that, I think I just sat for a while, I can't remember how long, and then the old man came back and he was just there and he said, it's time to go now. I said, okay. Um, and I left with him and we walked all through the woods again. It was a beautiful thing just to examine these woods because the woods is my place and this was a different kind of wood. And we left the mushroom house behind, we left the woods behind, and we go back to the edge of this cliff. And instead of sitting back at the cliff, I actually go over the cliff, like I'm about to fall off it. And as I go over, boom, you know when you wake up from a dream, it's like, you're like, you're falling in a dream and you wake up, it's kind of like, boom, like that. My eyes open back in the physical world this time. And 
it was like ecstasy, like just pure joy running through every cell in my body, pure joy. I didn't know whether to cry, I didn't know whether to sing, I didn't know whether I wanted to run around the house, I didn't know what I wanted to do, I was just blessed, like seriously blessed. And I remember after like 10 minutes or so had passed, I just remember thinking to myself, if someone burst into my room right now with a gun and said, I'm gonna pull the trigger in five seconds, I'd just smile at them and say, let's go. <laughs> I'd just be like, okay. Because the fear of death disappeared. You know, they, when, when Buddha became enlightened, you know, they said like, what did you gain? And he said, I didn't gain anything, but what I lost, was the want for material items and the fear of death like it's all about life a lot of life is about unlearning than learning right but i just remember i had no fear of death i had no fear of illness or any of these things and i just felt so happy and then i heard like a like a pop in my head and i remember it kind of took, took me by surprise um, but again, I was in such a happy state that it didn't really phase me. But once the whole experience had kind of worn off, and you don't, it doesn't wear off. I was up for like four hours at night <laughs> um, afterwards. But once I started kind of accepting that, okay, I'm back in my body, um, I decided to Google pop in my head, pop in my brain, and then afterwards put like meditation or pop in my brain spirituality. And... <laughs> it says when the third eye is activated oftentimes people will hear a pop in their head what do you, what do you say to that other than amazing but do you know what there was no like um, oh my god oh my goodness I saw through my third eye it was just beautiful I was just like that's beautiful what a beautiful thing and I just felt so blessed to have had that experience but you want to know the weirdest thing? I've never wanted to go back. I've never tried to go back. I've never done that kind of meditation. I've never taken anything to try and get back to that place. I've never seeked going back to that place. It was a real one-off. And I was so young and it just, it just made me very happy. And I realized that there are other realms out there this isn't the only place for us and it was beautiful and there are people on the other side who are there for me there's that old guy there's that female energy which again it could have been like a relative or something but it just felt homely you know that 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 entity whoever she it was felt like a family member like someone who i know um a guardian angel perhaps I don't know but I, I've never wanted to go back well I, I would like to go back but I've never kind of had that urge to go back and do you know what's funny as well well sorry not funny but um when I looked up the whole popping in the head thing on the same article that I was reading it said that a lot of people become very depressed after they have these experiences because they want to go back so much and that all they try and do is go back, go back. And when you try, it doesn't happen. And I think that's that must be what it was because the whole meditation thing, I was just, I wasn't trying to go there. I wasn't, I didn't expect to have that at all. I was just trying to relax before bed and suddenly whew, I'm in this world. And I'm so grateful for the, for the experience. I'm so grateful for it. Um, did I imagine it? Maybe, I didn't. Was it real? Maybe. It was. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what happened that night? I'm the only one who experienced it. I'm the only one who can take something from it. How do you have a situation like that? How do you have an experience like that? I can't tell you. I'm sorry. I can't tell you. I don't even know if I could go back. There's something inside me that tells me that that was a one-off. You can't do that again. That was something very special. Because 
there are other realms out there, there are other worlds, but you know how I was saying at the beginning, like it's a crime to not share a beautiful experience? It's also a crime to think that there is a better place out there and not appreciate this one. It's fine to think that there are no better places, like that there's a heaven and there's a, another realm, which there clearly are, but to have the need to constantly escape this world, that's a problem. Because this world is beautiful. If you look in the right places, and if you try and change your paradigm, one of my favorite quotes of all time is, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And I live by that. And I think that experience helped me apply that saying to my life now. Will it happen again? Who knows? Who's to say when we all die, we'll just open our eyes and we're all going to be in a big circle and we'll just say, wow, did you feel that? (laughs) <laughs> can you imagine did you feel it yeah what happened I was a I was a guy called George and I lived in England and <laughs> who knows thank you for listening I appreciate it um, as I say I never never told anyone this because I don't like telling people because I just think I'm strange but who cares who cares have a beautiful day sending you love sending you peace sending you blessings sending you strength And sending you a little pinch of magic. Because it's clearly out there. And I'm not the only one who's had an experience like this. There have been a lot of people. Good luck on your journey.